So we have, we have a couple of more minutes uh, till it's time, but let me show you this, this thing. If I ask it, who knows what uh, this thing is? One. That's not many. So this is, this is called Scratch. <laughs> Two. Oh. Double just in a couple of seconds. <laughs> Great. So Scratch is, I think, but the best software development environment ever. <laughs> you have these these sprites, these little things, and you can program it with uh, you dr drag and drop this stuff from the left hand side. And yeah, and then you have loops. Oh, repeat, yeah, and you can take it and put it inside. And then the little thing will run around or do all kind of stuff, and they can send messages to each other. And uh, you can also program the background. And so this is the coolest stuff ever, I think. And even if you don't, well, it's not that relevant here, but for places where uh, people don't speak English, it's especially for kids, you can switch the the the, the language of the little spro the, uh, of the controls, for example. Yeah, let's speak a language, let's speak Hebrew, so it will change the text and the direction of the little oh. things, <laughs> so I think it's, it's great, um, especially for kids who, who don't speak English and uh, you don't want, you don't want them to, to have that at disadvantage as well when they're trying to program, start to program. Uh, so anyway, is it on? Yeah. So my my name is Gabor Sabo, and um, I'm going to talk in this uh, 20 minutes uh, about refactoring Perl code. Yeah, I already question. If I t stand here really close, I can't don't move. That's better. Wow, that's not really. Uh, well, I'll try to stand here. <laughs> it's not not uh, the way I usually give talks, um, move around, whatever. So I'll try to do this way. Uh, so I'm still Gabor Sabo, and I'm going to do this to talk about refactoring Perl code. I'm r uh, running the Perl Weekly. If you have not yet subscribed, then go ahead. It's a weekly newsletter. And there's this Perl Mavens thing, which is uh, trying to help people learn more Perl. So what is refactoring? Uh, let me I'll start with a question. How many of you? are writing only new Perl code. OK, zero, I see. <laughs> Maybe someone is putting on the hands and looking at the video. Anyway, so how many of you have been refactoring code recently? So why are you here then? <laughs> Everyone knows what <laughs> you're doing this stuff then. OK, so refactoring is basically try changing your code without changing it from uh, f changing what it does, basically. Well, that should be refactoring, but if you have, have been doing this, if you have been doing the refactoring, then you already know that that's not always the case. You start making changes uh, just to improve the internals of the code, and very quickly you find bugs, and then you want to fix them, but one, the point, at the point when you're actually fixing a, a bug, even though it's good, right, it's a good thing to fix the bug, but it's not anymore refactoring. So. When people are talking about refactoring, they actually, in fact, doing other things as well. That makes peop other people a lot more nervous. Because changes every time can introduce problems, new problems, different problems. OK, so I'm fixing one, I'm introducing another one. So there are, there are questions, a couple of questions. Why? And one of the first one is, why to refactor? Uh, so the reason we do refactoring is because we Actually, before that, let me just give you a really simple point, even though you, you already do refactoring, but the, little, the simplest refactoring is when you have a variable name that you just put it there, dollar $x, for example, and you don't know what, what should be that. And after a while, you figure out that dollar $x is actually, you can have a much better name, and you rename it to, let's say, dollar $y, because that sounds much better. <laughs> and um, that's, re that's refactoring, OK? Uh, so you do it because you want to improve your, the readability of your code, the maintainability of, maintainability of your code, 
to make it easier for you to maintain in, in the future or to extend the code easier in an easier way and so on. So you're doing it because you want in the future, you want to benefit in the future. And that's the, that's the problem. So the refactoring is basically a long-term investment. You do, when you do refactoring, that's a cost, right? You do some work, no matter what. It's also a huge risk because you're changing the code and any change, no matter your intentions, any change can introduce bugs or other problems. So it's a cost and a risk when you're doing it, and the benefit is going to be on the long term. Now, how long is the term? That depends on the people, that depends on the project. In some cases, this long term is seen in one year, two years. In my case, it's usually about five, ten minutes. And that's, that's the long term, because I'm writing some code, and I'm quickly figuring out that I can write it, I can uh, make it cleaner, and that it makes, means that the next change is going to be easier for me. And when I'm writing that code, that means that it's quite quickly I get to the point that it's going to be easier for me if it was cleaner. So it's worse for me to invest in that cleaning up. But for many people or many projects, it, they think that it's uh, only a year later or two years later or when we'll need to change that code, then we'll have benefit. And maybe, hopefully, that will be after the time I already leave the company. <laughs> and there lies the problem. Okay, because anyone who, I mean, most people want to earn from this, benefit from this. So you want to put some investment to take some risk, and you want to see the benefits to be higher than your investment and your, your cost and your risk. Okay, even if you don't measure it uh, um, in dollars or any type of currency, you want your benefits to be higher. And if you think that you won't benefit or someone else will benefit, then you probably won't do the investment and you don't, don't take the risk. And that's uh, what I see a bit, uh, tension between, many times between management and the programmer. The programmers usually feel that they will do the same thing later on. They will be the one who need to maintain it later on, while the managers usually see more the risk because they, don't, they feel that by the time the benefit will be there, if, that, if at all, they won't be there around, so they don't benefit from it. So that's a problem. But any, in any case, how do you know that, that uh, all, all kind of things? So how do you know that you haven't broken anything? Hmm, anyone? Tests. Tests, okay. So any refactoring actually starts by writing lots of lots of lots of tests. And that's already a problem because tests, if they test something that still works, then no one understands why do you need that. I mean, it was working. Why do you need now a test, right? Tests are supposed to be, at least the, in the head of many people, tests are supposed to be fine bugs. If there are bugs, that's good. But they found it brilliant, you can fix it. But that's not, that won't help in, in the refactoring, where you want to test whether the same thing that worked yesterday still works to, today. Okay, so another question. When you know that you're done? Anyone? How do you know that you're done with refactoring? You're never done, okay? You will never done, and that's the problem, another problem, that managers usually think that you will never be done, you, that you, that's a never-ending sto never story, refactoring, because, well, maybe because that was their experience, or because they just, because we, even we can't really define up front, or even uh, later on, that now we are done, because we can every, any time we can find a, 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 an improvement to our code. So it's actually really, needs to be a process. It's not, it shouldn't be done like, okay, I have been coding for three years, now I'm going to refactor for th seven years. That's not really the, you should be, it's, it's constant, it should happen, okay? I write some code and a couple of hours and then I do some refactoring immediate, immediately. And if it's a, it's a, it's, if it's a, a process that we always do, then it's much better. And then we might be able to do that while people are not looking. So maybe we have allocated three hours to write this code and uh, we managed to do it in two hours and 40 minutes. Then the next 20 minutes we can silently refactor some code. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm not sure. Don't listen to it. Anyway. <laughs> so, and the question whether it's worth it. And that's, that's a really difficult question. And that comes back to the 
investment and, and taking the risk versus the benefits thing, the, rate, uh, the profit thing. And it's very hard to tell. It's basically, yeah, I don't know. So what kind of tools do we, do we have for refactoring? There are a couple of uh, tools that you can actually use that, to refactor things programmatically. Uh, there, in Eclipse, it has a, uh, the plugin Epic, which, is, which allows you, which turns Eclipse into a Perl IDE. It's uh, quite good, and it has a couple of refactoring uh, capabilities. But as, I've, as far as I know, all, most or all of them are actually implemented in this module called Deval Refactor. So this on CPAN, the, the refactoring capabilities are actually on CPAN. You would be able to interface them or use them from other tools as well. The other one is Padre, uh, the Perl ID that I've started to write. And originally, it, uh, the name was uh, Perl Application Development and Refactoring Environment. So the, the, the whole thing started out uh, as to uh, that it is the plan to become an environment where actually you can do refactoring. And I think we managed to do a decent job. We, I think out of the about 300 different ways to refactor code, we implemented maybe two or three. So there is a beginning. Uh, and most of that, if not all of them, have been factored out, well, again, that word, moved out uh, to this module called PPIX uh, Editor Tools because we wanted, and some people wanted to use the same refactoring capabilities from other editors like VI or Emacs or basically any editor that can run external uh, applications, external code. So basically, there, there, there are two, two tools, two environments that already provide some of these uh, capabilities, but there are actually modules that implement that, them. And uh, the hope is that more people will implement more of these refactoring capabilities and that will benefit all of us, both those who use Padre and those who use VI or Eclipse or Emacs or whatever, doesn't matter. So let's go a couple of refactorings, actual refactorings. The one of them is the, the ba most basic one is the is rename variable. And then you have the variables $x or the at y or uh, the person did that, z. It's not just it, it's not that simple as to just rename every place where you see $x when you want to replace $x. You want to make sure that you don't replace the element of an array which is called at x let's say, let's say. So you want to make sure and uh, that when you're re changing $x, you're actually really changing only the scalar variable. And you also may want to make sure that if you have $x and you want to change it, you change it only in the lexical scope when it was declared. So you might have the same name, $x, in various scopes, and you want to make sure that ch you change only one, one of the variables. Otherwise, you probably don't make um, a lot of... Uh, difference in the refactoring. You still have the same problem. So this is, this is one of the problems. Then you might have uh, package variables, right? So you might have a $x, which is a package variable. Now that can be an even bigger problem, because even though you can easily replace, change the $x in your package, that might have been accessed from the outside world, from other packages. So now you have to be either more careful or just don't care. Say, okay, if someone broke the, the thing, I mean, someone has been, have been accessing that $x that haven't been declared as, as public variable just because they could, then their code is going to be broken. Now, of course, if you have more control about, of, of your software, of all the modules that are using this, or the code that is using your module, then you can do a search and replace on all the code base. But I've seen companies with, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of scripts, and they, ha they don't know where they are. So they can't just refactor it. So they can't change, they can't refactor the code because they don't know where, where it is used. Then another thing, rename subroutine. So that's a, also another simple refactoring um, step when you change, change the name of, of a subroutine. That might be a little bit easier because instead of just renaming a subroutine, you can provide a, you can um, declare the same name, the old name again, and uh, put a warning in there and call the new name for a while. So you, ha you, can, have, you can easily have a deprecation period. And then you warn, and then after a while you remove even that uh, placeholder, that function, that uh, subroutine placeholder, 
and that will make it um, easier for people who are using your code to, to follow your changes. Of course, you have to decide how long you have this, this uh, deprecation period. Uniting subroutines is, uh, well, I've seen a lot of places where they have um, uh, actually automated copy-paste. So they had like uh, hundreds of copies of the same, same subroutine in various places. And um, then I have to try, I was trying to unite them, but some places they have changed it. So when we're trying to unite two subroutines that are supposed, they have the same name, most of, more or less the same code. Well, that's a problem, the more or less. So that's a difficult thing. And probably the only way to do that, so there can be some automation in, in here, but mostly it's, it's a manual process, trying to figure out what, things, uh, what subroutines can be united. Extract subroutine, that's one of the basics uh, of refactoring, is that when you, ha you, you inherited these nice uh, scripts of thousands of thousands of lines without any subroutine inside, and you want to make some sense, so you are trying to take some part of the code, maybe 100 lines, maybe 200 lines, they're still too big to be a, a, a good subroutine, but something you try to take out and put it into a subroutine so sort of you can manage more, more easily. Um, so there are tools that can do that. Uh, Padre has um, a menu item that can do that, but the problem, of course, is that you have to figure out which variables to pass into that uh, subroutine and what values, what, uh, values and, and parameters to get out. And that's not an easy, and I'm not sure that what Padre implements is not, breakable, not easily breakable, okay? And uh, because it's implemented in the PPIX editor tools module, I think it's going to be pretty easy for you to write more test cases. So you bring in uh, a, a sample code, and then you try to refactor it with this tool and see if the result is, is, is the correct one. And then um, you can easily write tests that way. And this is uh, like this is something that uh, my my pet peeve. So so the indirect uh, object, uh, the indirect call of objects, the the upper one, this one, which works most of the cases, but uh, not always. So I prefer to write it in the the way it's in, in the lower, uh, the the second one. So that could be a, an easy refactoring probably, just to rewrite all these things. Uh, and then this example. The double negative, okay, so people like to write this unless not available, I don't know. Uh, personally, for pe people who are not native English speakers, the whole unless thing is much more difficult. Um, but anyway, this, in spe this special case is, is, is again something that should be probably refactored. And um, then there's an another example, the return earn thing. So you have this piece of code, uh, which is... Um, well, it could be, it could be obviously most, more complex, but the easy way to refactor is, is that there is this else return part, so I can turn around the whole code and instead of that have return immediately, just checking the if, the, the dollar $x, and then the, the whole thing moves to the left, so the indentation, one indentation is removed, and the code gets a little bit shorter and uh, a much more cleaner, at least in my eyes. But if you paid attention, then Actually, many of these that I've mentioned here, even the complexity of a subroutine, not necessarily the length, but the complexity, taking, care of, taking uh, in account also the number of if statements and so on, these are all kind of policies in Perl Critic. So basically, I can say that anything Perl Critic finds as a problem is something that could be or should be refactored. And there is something, uh, a really nice opportunity, I think, to extend Perl Critic, basically. So whenever it finds a problem, I will be able to tell the tool, whatever it is, to, okay, now fix it. So you found the problem, just go and fix it. I'm not sure that all of them can be done. I'm not even sure that 20% can be done easily or in a relatively easy way. But the more we can do, the better. Okay, that's it about. Any questions? No, I can't. I have to test them here. Any questions regarding refactoring? Uh, scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So the, then I come up with a question because uh, I gave this presentation once and then uh, people asked me, okay, but 
How many times do you really refactor with the tools? So, because you have been doing so many, so many of you have been doing refactoring. Who have been doing it? Who has been doing it with any kind of automated tool? Wow, three. What have been using? Okay, stuff you've written yourself. Others, you written yourself. You? Indeed. Hmm? It's on CPAN? No, or indent. Hmm? Sorry? Indent. Indent. Okay. Okay, so, so something like something like a Perl tidy. Okay, so anyway, uh, very few people tried it, and uh, in my uh, little experience, I mean, I, as I said, Padre was started out as with the hope that it's going to be able to refactor things, that it will be able to have. I don't know. I've heard about that Java is so good because you have tools to refactor it, and I've never tried it, so I don't don't really know about that, but. Uh, uh, and I, I had this hope that Perl will have this nice tool that uh, can automatically refactor parts of, the, of your code. I think we are far from that yet, but um, there are many people here. Maybe some, some of you will want to try to take Perl Critic and uh, see come up some of the policies and implement uh, the fixing of it. Anyway, thank you for listening.